Hey, John here, thank you for joining me for Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, it's time for yet another poem. Uh, here we go. Agonizing. Heartbeat. Secretive. Treasure. Unending. Doki Doki. Ambient mouse. Silly. Candy. Amazing. Puppy. Captive. Lipstick. Socks. Pure. Massacre. Marriage. Extreme. Blanket. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Ah ha ha. Something's not quite right here. You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club, and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination. But I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ugh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Zari all of a sudden. Monika, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people. Huh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monika. Huh? That's not how you say my name at all. What? Well, Jesus, we were just talking about this in the comments. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Eh? Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for today, okay? For now. Hehe. <laughs> Fine, fine. Your actions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah. Uh, eh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. So for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sari shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sari before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monika if she's noticed anything about Sari recently. Since they have been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monika, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Jono, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sari recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monika peers across the room at Sari, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Jono. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she never really she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Jono. Me? 
How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sari talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh. She's been so much happier ever since you have joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sari is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. Hear her. You're so funny, Jono. Have you thought that maybe your voice in her is so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Hmm. Ah, I've said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Manika smiles meanfully. I know she said to forget it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monika stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sari is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sari and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monika. I'm sticking with Monika, I can't change. Hey you! Eh? I look up to see Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... Ah, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez, now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to leave you alone, and I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles that last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem like a big deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. So it's Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her, because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against your wishes. Exactly! If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah, I should have thought of it that way from the start. That Suki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She... she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not! Jeez, if you're fine, then it's hurrying get started already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Manika calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Manika, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. More poem reading, alright. <sighs> Sayori, let's start with you. Hmm, it's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Natsuki. Eh, I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Jono. Sorry. Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Hee <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. 
Sorry? Tell me I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sari cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. I didn't even have to read her poem. That's Suki. Let's see, let's see. You're certainly enthusiastic today. Of course. You know I like your writing. I'm just surprised. Seems like you had a lot of trouble admitting that before. Well, well of course. I just had to put you in your place a little bit. It's not like... I mean, it's not like I was shy or anything stupid like that. What jealous? I really wasn't jealous. Just because you happen to be a good writer? That's such a dumb thing to get jealous about. Ah! Now, Suki. What? You're not very confident about your writing, are you? Eh? Well, what are you talking about? My writing is obviously the best. Right? Mm. It took me a while to figure out, but I think I finally did. Maybe Natsuki acts so arrogant because she's trying to make up for her own insecurities. If she acts like she's the best, then other people might think that way too. Alright. Do you know? Please just tell me you like my poems. I don't care if you hate them. Just please tell me I'm the best. I just... I just really need to hear that from someone. I know I sound stupid, but there's a reason I never shared my poems before this. Natsuki. Because... Because nobody ever takes me seriously. What's the point in sharing my poems that people just laugh and say, That's so cute, just like you, Natsuki. Sometimes I don't want to be cute, but nobody understands that. I try really hard when I write. The style doesn't matter. The emotions are there. Why can't anyone see that? I just want... Natsuki trails off. Maybe it's because her lips start to quiver. I look down. Her fists are clenched really tightly. Hey, Natsuki. If you're not careful, you'll rip your own poem. I gently grab the poem with my own hand until she relaxes her grip on it. I place it flat on the desk and smooth out the wrinkles that she put into it. They don't read it! Before I can pick it back up, Natsuki snatches the poem up from the desk. It's not any good. And I know you hate my poems. So you don't have to read this one, okay? But I want to read it. Well, why? Because. I like your poems. I really do. Why would I judge you for your style? It's not like I... It's not like my own style is anything crazy. I mean, it's true that the first time I read one of your poems, I didn't look much into it. But I know you better now. And it's wrong for Yuri to think your style is more amateur than hers. And Sayori, she always means well. But sometimes she's so focused on simple happiness that she doesn't understand what people really want. Yeah, I guess I really never really thought about how hard it is for you. And I'm sorry if I was part of that problem. If I was part of that problem. I understand now. You're not just cute, you're a lot more than that. Uh, Natsuki, you're doing it again. Once again, Natsuki clutches her poem a little too hard. She looks down, hiding her eyes from me. I never realised how difficult this was for her. But finally, she forces herself to extend her arms and set her poem on the table. You can read it. Just turn that way. I don't want you to look in my face right now. Okay, I will. Because you... Tomorrow will be brighter with me around, but when today is dim, I can only look down. My looking is a little more forward, because you look at me. When I want to say something, I say it with a shout, but my truest feelings can never come out. My words are a little less empty, because you listen to me. When something is above me, I reach for the stars, but when I feel small, I don't get very far. My standing is a little bit taller, because you sit with me. I believe in myself with all of my heart, but what do I do when it's torn all apart? My faith is a little bit stronger, because you trusted me. My pen always puts my feelings to the test. I'm not a good writer, but my best is my best. My poems are a little bit dearer, because you think of me. Because you, because you, because you. Why are you looking at me like that? If you don't like it, then just say it. I won't. You're mad. No, it's not that I don't like it. It was just a little surprising to read. Yeah, I guess I'm not used to hearing such nice things coming from you. They don't just say that. Dummy, what do you think the point of writing is? Expressing things that you can't just say. Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry for missing the point sometimes. I always mean well. And I'm happy that you showed this to me. I liked it. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm a pro, so 
and Suki mumbles, completely failing to sound confident like she usually does. Just remember that I can think these things sometimes too. You know, when you're nice to me, it's meaningful. Ah, uh, I'm glad. Sensing that Suki is satisfied, I start to hand the poem back to her. But as I do so, Natsuki takes my hands and pushes them back away. Her small, soft hands surprise me with their assertion. I don't want it. Eh? Why not? I just don't. Jeez. I realise what Natsuki is doing. Unable to be honest, she's trying to give me the poem in a roundabout way. Well, in that case, I'm going to keep it. Instead of teasing her, I choose to go along with it. Good. If you didn't, I would. Never mind. Just, I'm glad that you want it. Natsuki backpedals on her words and leaves it at that. Despite her best efforts to hide her expression, I can see her faintly smiling to herself. That's all for now, so... Go put it away before someone sees it, okay? Uh, yeah. I'll go do that. With that, I return to my seat so I can put away Natsuki's poem. Guess no one else gets to read it. Unless I'm the last. Hmm. Well done, Jono. You have definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this, it's a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monika. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore, but it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. It's been fun getting to know everyone in their writing, and I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Jono? Eh? Well, you know how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself? In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Huh? Why me? Well, you're always sophisticated uh, with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Mm. Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Eh? For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as if... It's not as bad as you're making a sound in your head. I just mean that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked. Yuri. What? What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to share your poem now? Okay. Yeah. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making. Where the womb of earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss. But beneath grey rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest, would, the easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently look at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to your road at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to make a metaphorical approach to it. You said that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I see. Something tells me the poem that Suki showed me isn't the one she plans on sharing with everyone else. Of course, I chose not to mention that to Yuri. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. 
Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. And the last. Hi, Jono. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club for one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people that is one thing. I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ha ha ha. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monika take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Hmm. Sticking with the Natsuki style once more, I see. Hmm. You really like Natsuki, don't you? Eh, that's... Oh, come on, Jono. It's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Pretending to like the manga that she's into. You know how Natsuki is. If I don't indulge her, she'll end up hating me. No? Eh? No, I think you're misunderstanding, Jono. It's not like Natsuki just hates anyone who doesn't give her what she wants. Yeah, she's assertive, but she's not that selfish. In fact, I think you're the only one who's indulged her as much as you have. Is that so? I kind of knew that, but I just didn't want to admit it. So, I just need to ask one thing of you. Be careful, please. Yasuki is kind of unpredictable. A lot of times, she doesn't even know what she wants. After all, she's the youngest one here. She might not know how to handle her own feelings properly. What I'm saying is, if something bad happens, then it could end up damaging the club too. And you wouldn't do that to me, right? That's... I'm not sure how to respond to Monika. While I care about her in the club, it's also kind of unfair to bring that up. Well, you're smart. I'm sure you'll do the right thing. Monika smiles sweetly. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything An old tale tells of a lady who won deserve. The Lady Who Knows Everything A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift in the sky, victim of the current of the mind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall, and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. Let me seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of my opinion, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. Anyway, it's always paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things they're more sad than happy. Ah ha ha, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monika's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to saying you've got so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging in a way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me? Or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. 
a catchphrase. I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, Stoke Nerdy Nerd is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sari isn't here. Oh, uh, it seems you're right. Sigh. Sari always helps light the moon a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times not go home with you, you pick the time she's not feeling well. So much for you to be all lovey-dovey. Ah, uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force her. Oh, That curious expression coming from Yuri, all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them, in different flavours. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Zeri will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Guys. Hmm. Can you help me come up with something for Yuri? Uh, I'm useless. N no, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Mm. And now, Natsuki's pouting too? Geez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sari enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, uh, that may be the case. But if I can't, I'll also be the leader on my own. And I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations and help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Jono. The one who is truly useless. Ah oh, ha ha, don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, uh, that's... Is Monika suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Oh, uh, I suppose I won't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monika's going to give me a choice. And you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Jono may not be like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Jono to... Well, what do you show? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Jono to decide how I'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... Uh, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Jono, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Mm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Monika, because... The voice. <laughs> Purely because of the voice. The other two are murder on me. Oh, I should have gone sorry. Oh, well, too late. Well, I guess we should probably be helping Monika. Yeah, you picked me. Hold on one second. Y yeah. Monika, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. Yeah, but... I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. Oh, good point. But Jonah was the one who... Ah. Uh, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. 
You're the club president, Monika. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monika, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? Well, what are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this won't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monika. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, you know. We wouldn't do as good a job if you make us work alone. Ah, uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Maruka. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, ah. So are you going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay. I get it. Sorry. It's technically most logical for Jono to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. Do you have a preference, Jono? I go Yuri. Well, I'll probably be more useful helping out Yuri. But me? Are you serious? Why would you? Natsuki, I can already tell that you're about to say something mean. N no, I was just saying, ugh. So, you'll be helping Yuri then, John. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Jono? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested in seeing how it will turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Hmm. Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No, no. That's not what I meant at all. Ah. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. Oh, uh, I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Jono picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it. I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Well, why? Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. Uh, I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sure if I said it's something bad... Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monika and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm not going to say this. Huh? You better bet that my cupcake is going to be the best part of the whole event! Oh, uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone picks up their things. I start to follow Monika and Atsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, eh? I turn around. Sorry. I realized that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. No, oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then. You and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Ah, uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I'd prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Jono. I think that we'll make a very good productive team. Even if you only choose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? Uh, I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason is the most common... You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But what, 
Yuri thinks herself of an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point you out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? I didn't realise. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? Or Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her a tremendous effort, Yuri finally says it and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. Alright, we are gonna leave it there. I can't believe this. Uh, yeah, more poem reading, but at least next episode might be doing some activities on Sunday. So, until then, thank you very much for watching, and take it easy.